Hi everyone and welcome to episode number five of building a guitar tone from scratch using the Spark Amp and the Spark app. In this episode, obviously we're going to be looking at uh, creating an acoustic guitar tone, still string acoustic guitar tone, uh, more specifically a finger picking style uh, sound. So this the sound that I'm going to give you, it's not necessarily going to be the, the most ideal for strumming. Um, it's going to be quite uh, um, too, a bit too brittle for, for that, a bit too uh, harsh. Uh, but it's great for for finger picking because when you finger pick, it's not so uh, the attack is not so uh, predominant. It's a bit more dull and softer, so you can get away with having a bit more of a glassy sound. So here's one inherent problem with guitars in general. There are just so many different varieties. Uh, as in electric, electric guitars, you can have different timbers, different neck uh, timbers to the body, uh, different body timbers in the body, as in like laid. Uh, same with acoustic guitars, uh, you can have all sorts of variables. The, the manufacturers uh, do different things. They will perhaps make uh, guitars out of spruce, some out of cedar. They all have different tonal qualities, so one guitar a manufacturer will make a guitar that's more woolly, a bit rounded, a bit more rounded, a bit more bass heavy, not so much treble, um, but more balanced across the whole spectrum of the frequencies. Um, and so there's too there's too many variables here uh, in 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 guitars. So th what I'm going to create is going to be specific to this this particular guitar here. And I want to talk about this guitar in a second. So. Um, this particular guitar is a UK brand made in China, Tanglewood. Cheap guitar. It's probably worth about four or five hundred dollars new here in Australia. But it had no electrics in it. Uh, so I wanted to do an experiment on it uh, and that entailed uh, doing a few upgrades. So uh, I decided to upgrade the saddle and the, the nut, sorry saddle and the nut to bone. Uh, I popped brass uh, bridge pins in. Um, I've popped some expensive Diodario strings on. Uh, I've fret leveled the guitar so that the action is quite low. Um, I'm ridiculously low, I mean 1.5 mil, which is not ideal for acoustic guitars, if, particularly if you're going to be doing strumming. Uh, but it's fine if you've got a soft touch and uh, you know how to handle yourself and, and, and not go too heavy on it. Um, the other thing, the major thing I did in the experiment was I decided to install an APR5, an AP5 Pro, sorry, from Maton. This is the pickup system uh, that was designed for Tommy Emanuel. Um, it's very... I'm going to say it's a very natural sounding uh, pickup system. I've played a couple of other pickup systems and they're great. Um, and recently a Martin that had the Fishman system in it and it sounded fantastic. Um, great for that guitar. The reason why I like this um, now that I've put it in is it actually, like I said, it, um, it accentuates the tonal qualities of this particular guitar. And I'm sure it would for any guitar for that matter. So uh, it's not going to overly color the sound. Uh, and the good thing about this one is you can blend the piezo system, which is the, the under bridge saddle system here, with the mic inbuilt microphone that's got in there as well, which can be moved to, to taste, uh, depending on how, how where you like it and which frequencies you want to you want to emphasize. So it's really hard for me to show you how the this particular guitar sounds. So I'm going to try and do that for you. So the first sound you're going to hear here from the guitar is just what this room mic is picking up, um, not from the guitar uh, pickups itself. And then I'm going to show you what the guitar sounds like uh, with just the piezo system and then just the mic. Uh, just, to show, just to show you that's how I set it for when I did my final um, track at the end of the song. And so here we go. So this is what the guitar sounds like just through the microphone. Uh, and we've got...
so that's that uh sounds fine uh not too much treble quite quite middly to my ears listening through the headphones um not too much bass either uh now we're going to turn the mic off and we're going to use the uh, just the piezo system on the guitar here And now we're gonna play using just the microphone system in the guitar and you'll notice that the volume is quite, or well, significantly lower and it's for a reason, it's so that the guitar doesn't feed back too much in live situations, but it, it it's just enough when you mix it in with your piezo system to make a difference. And I'll show you an example of them mixed in together or how I mix them in together and their ratios, just in case you wanna try and emulate as something similar on your guitar. And I'll also tell you what my settings are here on the guitar as well, um, on the EQing and the, the volume settings. Um, so here we go. So you see what I mean about the volume difference. Okay, so now I'm gonna do the combination of how I like it, which is the piezo system all the way up and the mic system on around about 70%. Uh, might as well tell you what the other settings are here on the, on the, the system here as well. Uh, the APR5 Pro system looks like this. What you've got is your mic level, your piezo system level here. You've got your um, frequency control, as in like which mid frequencies or mid frequency you wanna select and the level, whether you're gonna cut or boost that frequency. Uh, then you've got your uh, bass, overall bass, and your overall treble and your overall volume, master volume. So I would say um, that my frequency is set on my middle here at around about 700. And I've got it boosted to about three o'clock. Um, the base is all the way up, uh, sorry, it was just a little bit down. So it was probably on about nine and a half, nine out of 10. The treble's probably on about four and a half, just to get rid of some of that brittleness, um, which, I, which I didn't, I could have tried to get it out of the EQ pedal when we get to the app in a second, but uh, I, I, I thought it was better, it sounded better coming from the, the cutting the treble from the actual pickup system. Uh, and the master volume's all the way up. So now we've got this sound. And so you can hear straight away the guitar sounds more lively uh, and more realistic with the combination of the mic and the piezo. So if you're lucky enough to have a guitar that has a mic and a piezo, mess around with them um, because you can get some great results. Guitars with just piezos, you can get some great results as well, no doubt about it. The other thing I would even recommend, not that I did it in this particular demo that you'll hear at the end of this, uh, the, the, the tutorial, but you can also use something like a condenser microphone a room mic to pick up some of the acoustic sounds of the guitar in the room so a bit of natural reverb and stuff like that let me just show you what that sounds like um i'll leave the mic on the level that it is currently um and the guitar system on the level that it is currently uh, just so you can hear the difference so it's going to sound a little bit more spatial a little bit bigger again um, so here we go So the microphone did introduce a little bit uh, more of a mid hump in there as well. Uh, okay, so now we know what the guitar itself and the, without using the, the, the spark, I should clarify, the guitar at the moment is going, is plugged into my mixer uh, as well as the microphone into the mixer then into the, uh, my audio interface. But anyway, that's enough about the guitar and how, we've, how it sounds on its own. Uh, 
Let's head on over to the app and look at how I built the tone uh, that I used in the final recording. Okay, so here we are. And uh, I've chosen the, the pure acoustic amp model. One, because it was the first in line and um, I was able to get a good tone out of it reasonably quickly, so I didn't mess around with the other ones. So the first thing we're gonna do here is uh, we're gonna engage it. I'm gonna give myself, uh, I'm not gonna go all the way up with the gain, about eight with the gain, and we're gonna give ourselves some volume and around about eight as well. Um, just quick example. So we're not quite there to making the guitar sound like it did when in our in our test when we we're going straight into our mixing desk. Uh, we're going to give ourselves some bass. We're going to go about six. We're not going to go too high. The mid we're going to go about six point nine or six point five is close enough. And the treble we don't want to make it too trebly, um, and because it's just going to sound harsh. Um, again, actually, you know what? The and the other reason why we're going not all the way up with the middle as well, we don't want it to start sounding honky either. So now all of a sudden, as a comparison, we've got this. Again, we're not quite there yet. We're going to use the EQ pedal in a second to get us some more of the way. Uh, what I want to do next is actually, I should point out as well, if you really want some noise gate, by all means, stick it on. If you don't want some of that in-between sound, um, um, I quite like it for acoustic stuff. As long as you can control yourself too much and don't make too much string noise. Uh, I didn't use it in this situation, um, but I did use the compressor pedal, um, the optic optical comp. Uh, now we're gonna go, oops, that shouldn't be there. Uh, I'm gonna go to around about 6.4 on my level. We're just gonna, uh, we wanna boost the signal a little bit. Uh, we're gonna go to about 7.9. We're not gonna go full max out uh, on our compression. Uh, now, remember, the, the reason why we're sticking the compressor on is just like with clean guitars, there's, there can be a big variation in volume differences in, in your acoustic. Uh, you might hit particularly hard with your thumb and you might have a particularly bass heavy acoustic guitar. So you would use a compressor pedal to just even the signal out a bit more. And so now all of a sudden we've got this. sounding a lot better uh, but when we do the EQ uh, we're gonna we're just gonna really emphasize the the, the frequencies that we, we really like cut the ones that we don't uh, okay so we're gonna engage that now um, first things first I'm going to boot uh, sorry cut a little bit of the hundred uh, we're gonna go down to about three around about three oh that's a bit too much it's a bit hard to control this actually so about 3.2 is fine uh, the 200, we're going to we're going to cut it just a tad, about about minus one, um, and we're actually going to boost a little bit, only a fraction, 0.5 of the 400. Now here's where this is where I, I mean, there's a few different schools of thought. Um, I quite like the scooped acoustic guitar sound too. It also helps to make, in in, in my situation, the, the 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 signal sound a bit more glassy as well. So the the the, uh, the 800 hertz, I put right down to minus, uh, 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 minus eight, and the 1.6 I put down to about uh, seven point, oh, 7.6, 7.4 is fine, I can deal with that. Uh, the 3.2, we gave it a little bit of a boost, not much, we just gave it just a tiny tad up to around about 1.8. 6.1.8, that's fine. Now, uh, so this is what it sounds like now. And so what you'll notice is that by doing some of that uh, cutting and boosting, it's, it's kind of leveled out some of the differences with the string volume as well as what the compressor was doing. Uh, we get a bit more of a balanced sound. Uh, but bearing in mind, we also have to fix our level now that we've done some cutting. So, so we have to find unity gain. That's pretty good. So around about four, 4.5, something there, um, just to get it back to the level that you, you had it before you engaged the EQ pedal. Uh, okay, here's where we get interesting. Um, 
I went for the multi-tap, multi-head delay on this one. It kind of sort of has that sort of bouncing around randomly effect, like you might be playing in a valley or canyon or something like that. A bit of a really nice echo um, combined with the Holy Grail, which we'll see in a second. So I went for uh, the mode number three for the delay. Uh, volume we're stuck on around about 1.8. Again, we don't want to saturate the sound because we're going to get a lot of uh, um, a lot of that room and spatial sound from the reverb in a second. Uh, the intensity we're stuck on around about 4.5. That's the repeats. Then the the sorry, I should mention we, we went to around about 6.5 on the repeat rate. So that's around about 1300. Uh, now all of a sudden we've got this for comparison. And so you can just hear a little bit of that trail off there. It's just it's quite subtle, uh, just enough to give the, body, the the guitar some dimension. Uh, now okay, here's the fun part. Um, we're going for the Holy Grail delay. Let's engage that now. Um, we're going to go level around about just over um, half mix. So we're going to go 5.5, 5.7. That's fine. We're going to leave the dampness off. We're going to uh, we're going to engage the low cut filter to around about 5.2. We're going to get this is how we're going to get rid of a little bit of that um, a little bit of boominess. Uh, we're also going to get a little bit of uh, get rid of a little bit of um, high end with the reverb. As well, we're sitting on about 2.3. The time we're going to go all the way up, and the dwell we're going to go to about nine or thereabouts. It's close. Now, all of a sudden, we've got this. And so that trail off there was actually the reverb. So I had pretty much muted the guitar strings uh, uh, only about a second or so after I'd played the last note. So you, you get a really nice uh, a really nice tail there in conjunction with the with the delay. Let me do that again for you. Yep, a bit of a residual acoustic effect happening there, which is great. Um, it doesn't wash the sound out at all. Um, okay, so that pretty much takes care of the guitar tone for the acoustic guitar. Now, I pretty much, I didn't change anything. There's three guitar parts in the demo that you're gonna hear at the end of the, the tutorial, three. Um, one of them being the main the dominant one, which you'll see in the bigger picture, and the two smaller parts um, are, are really only meant to be a subtle uh, sort of uh, sort of altered chord voicings and uh, um, and some harmonies and stuff like that, uh, just to give it some texture. This is the intro to second part, it sounded like this. And the other part sounded like this. Put them all together and you you know it makes for a pretty sweet uh, sounding three guitar part melody it's only a short demo and only goes for about a minute 20 um but it uh, it conveys the idea well enough in my in my opinion uh as to the capabilities of the spark and the tones that you can achieve and the results that you can get from a cheap guitar with a, an expensive mic system or even a cheap guitar with a mediocre preamp system and even a room mic in conjunction with it as well uh, there's lots and lots of variables. Just bear that in mind. Um, the best thing I can do is encourage everyone to experiment like I do, endlessly. Uh, it's an endless pursuit. Okay, that's enough of the app. Uh, let's uh, put my ugly mug back on the fo uh, back on the screen. Well, that was lots of fun. Uh, I had a lot of fun spending these last couple of weeks putting this together for you guys. Um, uh, especially the the, the, the the tune at the end um, was 
just born out of a small idea and uh, I know it's only short but it's uh, uh, something I hope to build on actually because I, th- I think there's some nice ideas in there. I don't spend a lot of time playing the acoustic guitar and I should really because I enjoy it. I mean I'm classically trained, I've got the nails for it, uh, that's nylon string that is, um, but I don't spend a lot of time on the steel string guitar and I should because it really does um, open up new worlds. I mean I mess around with chord voicings more on the acoustic guitar than I do on the electric guitar. Uh, I slow down, I um, don't go 100 miles an hour, and I really think about uh, making sweeter, um, more melodic um, melodies with the acoustic guitar, and it's really refreshing. Not to mention the benefit of playing the acoustic steel string guitar, your fingers have to be a fair bit stronger, actually, in order to to fret the guitar properly. It's uh, it's vast, vastly different to electric guitar. And uh, it really translates well. So you spend some time on the steel string acoustic guitar and it's gonna make your, your fingers and your hands stronger. And uh, it's important to have strong fingers for fingering things. Sorry, fingering your, your guitar, yeah. Um, and uh, and uh, it's good for durability as well, you know. Uh, you got, if you've got stronger fingers, you're going to play. You're going to be able to play for longer and faster for longer before you burn out or your string, your hands get sore. Uh, so anyway, without further ado, thanks for watching. Uh, I really hope you enjoy the, the demo coming up and this video. Uh, stay tuned for the next one. I reckon I might do um, more of a strumming style sound um, for a steel string acoustic guitar. We'll see. Um, so anyway. Stick around for the the demo coming up shortly, uh, and uh, ciao for now. Mm-hmm.